Hello, this is Paul, the Oaken Knight, here to talk to you about something a little bit different today. Instead of going through a game review or a playthrough or something, we're going to go in the, in the domain of accessories for games. And in particular, uh, one problem that most of us face after we've been doing this a while is that you start accumulating more and more games especially these days with some of these games getting absolutely huge like uh, like a, the box for gloomhaven is is immense you start getting too many of these and you start wondering where are you physically going to store them well uh, one of the reasons why i named my channel the oaken knight is because i am also a weekend woodworker and i have uh, done some things through the years to uh, to make life easier around the house and i'm going to show you my solution for cabinetry for game storage. Before we start, I'd recommend that you take a look at a link that I've got in the woodworking playlist that I put together on my channel called Shop Notes number 97, Before and After Shop Upgrade. It's a video put out by you know, a guy with his, his wood shop to give you an idea of the, what's possible with this system of construction that I uncovered on, this ver on that very video. And I have gone ahead and made it the basis of a lot of storage solutions here at my home that I'm going to go through with you. In the, in the video, he shows you what he can do. He doesn't show you very much of how he does it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how I go about putting these cabinets of various types together. So without uh, getting too much farther, uh, let me go ahead and give you a pause so that you can go ahead and look up shop notes number 97. And then if you're interested, come back and we'll go through more of my take on it as well as more details as to how you go about actually building these things. So here it is. Here is an example of a storage cabinet that I built using this system. It is a six foot tall by 30 inch across and 18 inch deep storage cabinet. And I, I elected to put doors on it, although you, there's no reason why you have to. Now, one of the things that is a characteristic of the system is you can make these cabinets just about any size you want. The only thing that changes is the dimensions of the plywood after you, after you cut it to size. I have made cabinets four foot by two foot. I've made cabinets one foot by four foot. This one is 30 inches by 18 simply because of how large I cut the plywood. That you have great flexibility in how big a cabinet is you make. Uh, you can put doors on it like this one. You can put drawers in it. You can put nothing and just leave it open. I like to clad the sides and the rear with material to close it in, but there's no reason why you have to. The, uh, the construction is very solid. But the second thing to understand about this uh, cabinet is that it is almost glueless construction. The only glue that is in this entire cabinet is uh, the edging on the plywood for the shelves to provide additional support. And that's simply brad nailed and glued into place. Now, one of the things that I've done with every single cabinet that I make is that I want, to, I want it mobile. And so I put wheels on everything. I get two inch casters that, that's, that uh, pivot 360 degrees so that I can wheel these things around any which way I want. Uh, and it's absolutely no problem putting, uh, putting wheels on any of these cabinets. And if you look to the left, that's a different cabinet that I made using this technique. Same exact technique. I just, made the, I just changed the dimensions of the plywood that I used. Uh, in this case, I made it just under two foot by four foot. And I mounted a two foot by four foot piece of MDF on top that is simply straight off the shelf at Home Depot. If I ever mess it up, spill something, gouge it, or just wear it out, all I have to do is unscrew the corners and I can buy another two foot by four foot sheet of MDF and plop it on top and I have a brand new cabinet again. But as I said, none of these cabinets use glue except for right underneath plywood that is glued in place, but that's it. Uh, which means that say when you move, you can easily disassemble this thing. The, uh, the corners, are, the shelves are secured by a single bolt shooting through the corner posts. And you can see the head of the bolt on the right hand side of the cabinet. Uh, you unscrew those, the whole thing is just going to come straight apart and uh, you will be able to take this cabinet wherever you go. Okay, so having seen this, uh, the next detail I'd like to show you is the uh, shot on the inside of the cabinet. And you can see that there is a kind of a wedge in the corner. This is on the inside where uh, the bolt is coming through. 
So all this is doing is it's sandwiching together the corner post together with the shelf. What you see above you is the top of the cabinet, which is really just a shelf. You see the uh, reinforcement underneath the uh, shelf that I told you is the only thing that's actually glued in here. And that little wedge with the bolt coming through it pulls so tightly against uh, those uh, wooden edging that the, the shelves are held extremely securely in place. And they tend to be self-writing in the sense that when I first uh, saw this, I thought, well, gee, you'll have a hard time getting that cabinet to be straight and true. And I found this thing pulls itself together practically. I've had extremely little trouble getting these cabinets to come together and be at right angles. Just minor, minor adjustments with a square and then tighten the bolts up and boom, it's 90 degrees. My plans are simplicity itself. It's just a, a standard sheet of paper. I get a ruler and I, I start marking what I want to do. What this is, is a, is a utility cabinet, a workbench cabinet that I'm putting together uh, using this system. And you can see I mark the dimensions. I, I rough out some ideas as far as what I want to have inside of the cabinet. I'm showing the wheels at the bottom. I'm showing so, you know, a parts list that I'm going to need. Uh, then I make up my cut list and the materials list and I'm off to the races putting the thing together. What uh, started life is construction two by fours. I prepared the wood simply by doing some, some work on a, a, a jointer. But if you get straight wood, that's optional. I've done lots of projects. When I started, I, I, had, I didn't have a jointer and all I did is pick the straightest wood that I could. And if you don't have that, I think you can do fine. Uh, just hunt around, get the best wood you can that's straight, and you just run with it. What you do is you get your table saw set at uh, 45 degrees and uh, cut a 45 degree slice off of each side of the 2x4. So it ends up being six-sided. That's going to be where the, the post joins with the shelf, if you saw in the other pictures. So uh, you've made one side narrower. That is going to settle into the corner notch that you're going to put into the, the plywood shelving. Just to the left of that, you see what started life as two by fours that I simply ripped in half and did some milling on to make them smooth and square as I could or rectangular as I could. Those are going to be what gets glued on underneath the shelving to give it its, uh, even more strength. Over to the right, you can see these funny looking wedge things. Those are the corner pieces that go on the inside of the, of the cabinet that you run the bolt through to cinch up the uh, leg up against. All these things are, are they're, they're cut like salami slices off the same stock that you made the corner posts with. So they should have the exact same dimensions as the corner post because you slice them off the corner post. So for example, you've got an eight foot long uh, piece of two by four and you cut the corners off. And then let's say you're making a four foot tall cabinet. So you cut the posts at four feet, but you're gonna have this extra stock left over. Well, you're gonna cut those up into roughly inch and a quarter thick wedges or salami slices or whatever whatever you want to call these things and you're going to need four of them for each shelf each piece of plywood that's going to go inside the cabinet my recommendation is that you want a minimum of three uh, pieces of plywood a top bottom and somewhere in the middle so that the cabinet is nice and rigid and able to withstand whatever you call it to do once I have all the materials assembled typically the first thing I'm going to do is to dimension the shelves so you can do this on a table saw or you can do it on a, with a track saw if you have that. And barring either of those, the, the nice people at Home Depot have a very good uh, vertical saw that they can use and they can do it for you. So I've, I've, had them, I've had them do that for me as well. They may not be quite as precise as what you would want for doing detailed cabinetry, but for doing these shelves, I think they can get it close enough for you that you won't have any problems with it. The second thing I would do when I'm doing these projects is to then I cut the two by four to length to the the length I need for the corner post want to be careful you want to get them exactly the same length you don't want the corner posts to have different lengths to them that would be bad and then you'll need to rip two by fours down the center so that you have the material for the the support edging on the actual shelves 
after you've done all that and everything seems to be okay, you might run it through. Uh, you might use a planer or jointer to, to kind of square things up before you do all this stuff or possibly after. Sometimes when you say uh, rip a board uh, down the center, it has its internal pressures that have been in the wood all along that aren't released until you cut the, the thing and it ends up uh, bowing on you. Well, Having be, having a, a jointer is a handy thing to have to help you get out of those circumstance. But again, we're talking about cheap construction, two by four. I think you can also get by by cut, buying a couple extra sticks of it and uh, rolling the dice and just doing the cuts you need to do. Uh, typically, you're only a small percentage of the boards are going to do that on you. All right, so after you have all the, the two by fours ripped in half and you've knocked the corners off of the corner posts, then you're ready to cut the corners off the shelves. It's simply a matter of taking a square and knocking off roughly two and five eighths inch off of each uh, corner, just a square, two and five eighths inch square notch off of each corner. Uh, in my experience, that seems to work out just about right for the corner post to settle in there when you, when you cinch this thing together. Once you do that, you're ready to glue the supporting uh, materials and that would be those two by fours that you ripped down the middle and you want to do it so that it's just the same size as the edge that you're gluing it to. Uh, I simply use wood glue with clamps and a brad nailer to go ahead and assemble these things. Uh, you could use screws and glue. You, there's different ways you can go about doing it but uh, once you have the the shell's ready, you've done, you've done your work with the corner posts. Then you're ready to uh, make the, the wedges that you'll need to go ahead and cinch all of this together. And all the wedges are, are excess material for when, you, for when you cut the corner posts. They're cut exactly the same way as the, coast, the, the post is, except that you're going to cut them in about one and an eighth, well, about one and an eighth inch slices seems to be about right. It's not a critical cut per se, but try to, try to have it just slightly narrower than the, the edging that you put on the shelves, just so that it doesn't show when you, when you put them in. The one exception to this is that if you want to put wheels on, you're going to need to cut, the, cut these wedges to be flush with the bottom of the corner post. So they will need to be a little bit longer. And when you do that uh, and you make them a little bit longer, then you'll be able to put the wheels on the post. Okay, so let's say you've gotten this far and you've got the, the shelves prepared, you've got the corner posts prepared. The last thing you're gonna need to do to those posts is to actually drill the holes to shoot those bolts through. Now this is something you want to take a little bit of time with. The way I go about doing it is that I made a jig. It's a, <laughs> but in this case, a jig is a fancy word for a stick that I have to be at least as long as the corner posts. I go ahead and pre-drill that stick as a guide wherever I want to uh, have a hole for a bolt to go through to support the shelf. I go ahead and drill the stick, the jig, so that then I can go ahead and clamp it to uh, the corner post or the cor and simply drill through those same holes on each and every post in each and every location so that the holes all line up. Now, if you don't get these holes lined up, you could start having shelves that are not going in straight and so forth. So take your time with it. I usually do this on a drill press, although I think you could also do it carefully with a handheld drill. So go ahead and drill those holes. Uh, so if you wanted, you got to drill them for the bottom shelf, leaving enough room for the for the wheels if you have them. So you have to you're going to have that longer wedge, and it's got to line up with the bottom. Then you're going to drill in every location. You're going to want a shelf up up the corner post. You drill all four posts identical. You want to try to get that top hole so that the top shelf is flush with the top. So carefully measure and you'll be able to figure that out. Once you have all of that done, you're ready to start assembling. The easiest way to assemble this cabinet is simply to uh, shoot the bolts through the corner posts, put some washers, put a washer on the outside, put a washer on the inside. Once you get ready to put the bolt on, shoot the, shoot the bolt through. Uh, you've already drilled the quarter inch hole. You're putting a quarter inch bolt through a quarter inch hole. Then you put the wedge on. Uh, you're also going to need to drill holes in the wedges. The best way to do that is simply draw, uh, draw an X corner to corner on the skinny side 
of the wedge. Where those marks intersect is going to be the center of the, the wedge. I take it to my drill press, I drill a hole, and it's ready to go. Once you have done that, then again, you, you shoot the bolt through the corner post. Uh, then you put it through the wedge. You put on the associated hardware, nuts and bolts, so that it comes together, but leave it loose. And do that on all four posts for whatever shelf you're going to be installing first. I start with the bottom po I start with the bottom one. Uh, then you should be able to get just simply put the shelf onto each of the four posts and finger tightening the bolts so that they're, they're snug but not too tight because you, you may want to make adjustments. And you do this for each and every shelf that you're putting in. And once it's all there and finger tight, you're going to find that the cabinet tends to pull itself together. Uh, once you have, it, uh, have things straight and true, which I found not to be a problem, you can then simply tighten all the bolts up and voila, you have your cabinet, you have your shelves. If all you want is a basic cabinet, you're basically done. Uh, if you want to put on other things to make it uh, more suitable to your task or just looking nicer, I tend to like to put on the cladding, 1 8 inch plywood. I simply cut that. Uh, I picked out a color. It's kind of Home Depot orange, but hey, I like it. Uh, and I use a roller to apply you know, some paint that I had mixed. You can have any color you want. That's just latex paint. Uh, the corner posts I've got I, early on. I went I went ahead and painted the outside of them. It's a mix of uh, of uh, Rust-Oleum, the gloss white, and their gray. Three parts white to one part gray, and you get this kind of nice mediumish gray. I like that for the corner posts, and I like the enamel paint better than latex paint on the corners because it's a bit tougher. So I wanted to to try to hold up to a little bit of abuse anyway. And that is the basic cabinet. Now, as I said, you can go on the, beyond the basic cabinet. The cabinet that they actually built that I'm actually showing under construction here is a, is a workbench cabinet. And I made it so that I can store all kind of hardware. I bought some uh, storage containers that I went through. Everything that I've got and every, every loose nut, bolt, screw, nail, uh, fastener of any kind has ended up inside of these of these storage trays that I've mounted inside of the cabinet. I've also d made drawers to put them in there. I don't think I want to go through that in this video. That's kind of a whole nother deal as making drawers. But just suffice to say that you can do it and it is no, uh, it's no harder than putting drawers in these cabinets than any other cabinet I've ever done. It's basically your imagination's the limit as far as what you can put into these cabinets that you can bang together pretty fast. Uh, having said all that, I think I'm going to leave it there. Again, I'm just focusing on getting a basic storage solution for your game, so uh, we're going to stop here and go ahead and wish you guys good luck if you decide to do this. Otherwise, I'll, I'll simply be coming back with game reviews and stuff going forward. If you could, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate that. And for now, that's it. This is Paul the Oka Knight wishing you a happy evening.